when are our lives going to be quote unquote revolutionized? Well, so we should keep in mind that these technological transformations do take decades. I'm glad that you emphasize that. The first wireless cell phone call in 1973, the first data-based wireless network 91, smartphones 92, the early 2000s, we get the first consumer media services on mobile devices, Blackberries thereafter the iPhone, some way through the next decade, most of the world was running on mobile and cloud services. What's clear now is that the advent of real-time 3D, as we talk about it in industrial applications, the advent of XR in live patient surgery, and the fact that hundreds of millions of people, typically under the ages of 25, are all living in 3D worlds today. So not you or me yet, no offense. Talk to us then about how this is going to change our daily lives. For example, you know, you, you're joining us now remotely. Would it seem like you were here in the studio in this new world? That's certainly one element. We see this in particular emphasized by Meta where they talk about the idea of co-location and presence in virtual space. But in some instances, we will just be using some of the devices we have right now, but we might be doing those in 3D, what we call volumetric displays or holography. You and I might be sitting thousands of miles apart looking at a screen, but the actual presentation would be in 3D. And studies show that that has remarkable improvements on retention, engagement, nonverbal forms of communication. Now, you've had your Metaverse ETF now going for several months. You've got you know, names like Meta in there, not surprising. Also, Snap, which I found interesting because Snap's view of the Metaverse is so different from Meta's, where you know, Evan Spiegel has called Mark Zuckerberg's vision so hypothetical, and Snap is betting more on you know, more sort of augmented reality over real physical reality. And today, Snap unveiled a new web version of SNAP, which almost seems like it's going backwards. How do we square these two visions? The way that we square it is by ignoring the term altogether. It's helpful to talk about a new generation of the internet, but you'll find that because there's no concrete definition, some believe that it fundamentally requires crypto, others have VR-centric beliefs, others have augmented reality-centric beliefs. Under the classical definition where we're talking about real-time 3D, all of those are likely to fit in one way, shape, or form. Evan might talk about augmented reality lenses. Mark Zuckerberg might talk about a virtual world with all of your other vision cut off. That's still 3D, and they're still going to interconnect in some way, shape, or form. Now, let's talk about how this changes the world of streaming. You know, you were a longtime former Amazon studio executive, you know, how, how does this change the way we watch and what we watch and how? So this is a great example of the fact that we're already sitting in parts of this world today. Disney, of course, produced most of the Mandalorian using a game engine, a real-time 3D simulation engine. That meant that they could create the perfect sunset. They could hold that sunset in place. They can pull out the entirety of that virtual set reshoot it in five years, or make it available to you or an I on our Peloton, on a video game console, in virtual or augmented reality. That's one of the ways in which we're going to start to see entertainment change. You've seen that the Match CEO now comes from Zynga, and he, in his new role, is talking about the idea that you might be able to traipse Tatooine on a date rather than just play games from a smartphone. Now, Netflix earnings are coming up. We've been talking a lot about the success of Stranger Things, which is not necessarily a surprise, even though it's scarier and more gruesome than the last three seasons. I'm still watching it. Um, what would you bet is going to happen here? Do you think they're going to buck the trend that we saw earlier this year? Or are we going to see a slow uh, degradation in the number of subscribers for a while? It's clear by all streaming benchmarks that Stranger Things season four was as exceptional as the fans hoped in, in excess of what Netflix did. But also third-party analytics show that a lot of the subscriber additions are weaker than we would have hoped for, and in particular, churn looks worse. Antenna, a subscription analytics and data company, shows that Netflix now ranks second last in terms of subscriber retention after 30 days from sign up. They're also at a four-year high for the overall services churn and retention. And so the numbers basically say that even if it was a pretty strong quarter for ads, the churn elevation is likely to offset them and more. 
Lord of the Rings, uh, the new series, Jeff Bezos tweeted out the trailer last week. Do you think it's going to be a, a mega hit like Stranger Things has been for Netflix? Stranger Things came out in 2016, and it's still breaking records seven years later. Defining by that degree is going to take some time, but do I think that it's going to premiere to outstanding viewership globally, that it's going to cover the press, that it's going to be one of the most significant things that Amazon overall does in 22? Absolutely. So uh, what's your take on the overall tech market dynamics? You know, we've got this negative news out from Apple that they're going to slow down spending growth, that they're going to slow down hiring. Apple, you know, long considered a bellwether for consumer sentiment. Mm -hmm. Are you taking that as a signal, a bad signal uh, for the rest of big tech for the foreseeable future? It's not encouraging, certainly. When you take a look at how many other creators, founders, products and services rely on the iPhone and the incremental improvements from every device refresh. None of that's good. But we're seeing this industry-wide separate from Apple. The video game industry was down 19% year over year last month. Year to date, it's trending at 11% year over year. And so we're looking at a you know broad situation where consumer electronics, entertainment, leisure, high-end GPUs from NVIDIA are all getting compressed. The drop in the crypto markets is exacerbating that on a demographic basis.